you to join us and to stay with us here on ENCA. I'm Gareth Edwards. Tomela Mototwana Tumza uh, is away for today. She's back tomorrow. Though. I see people tweeting me going, Gareth, where's T? Uh, T is back again tomorrow. But uh, Lindiwe Zulu, Social Development Minister, uh, still with us and has been for the last couple of minutes. We're unpacking quite a lot in a couple of your tweets coming through. Minister, thanks again for staying with us. I'll see if there's more tweets coming through. Gareth Edwards, SA, and at ENCA. If I can fit them in, uh, I will. We, you know we're going to talk about some politics. You knew we were yeah, going to. That's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why you're here. Politics. That's why you're here. But the ANC, the ANC side of it. This that's weekend, where I belong. It's, it's, it's already messy because you were talking about salaries earlier and people relying on money. And now we have the reports. You'll know the reports. Some ANC staff members saying they haven't been paid again for, for two months. Uh, what does that mean for someone who works in the social development side when you know how important money is? Yes, I'm also in conversations uh, because I, I am also in part of the members of the finance committee for the ANC. I just think that um, we never thought we would be where we are right now. Where are Things we? Move, fr I mean, from a point of view of the ANC not having as enough resources at, as it used to have in the past and being able to pay salaries. It, we've been here for the past 29 years. You've never had, not even one year, where you heard that the ANC was unable to pay salaries. What happened? We've got, um, it's a money issue, number one. And number two, it's also a planning issue of... Um, making sure that we get the resources from ourselves because you cannot always rely on the outside. One of the things that we've done, we're getting ourselves to pay for stuff. National Executive Committee members pay 6,500 rands every month to make sure that the salaries and other things are paid for. Your premiers, your mayors, and it took us long to do that. I think we should have done that a long time ago. And probably we should have also invested a little bit better. The unfortunate thing is that, you know, the world is changing and the dynamics are so quick mm. that if you slow in it, you're going to be caught up with such. But I know that um, the Treasurer's Office and the Treasurer General, I mean, uh, Paul Mashadile himself, is doing everything he can to make sure that we do get the money. Even for the conference, by the way, we're going to the policy conference we're now paying for going to the policy conference because we must appreciate and realize that the ANC doesn't have a factory where it goes and gets mm. the money. The money must come from us as members. We also kept our membership um, fees too low for too long because, I mean, 12 rents per year to be a member of the ANC was that just... that what it costs? I that's, have no that's, idea. No, that's what it costs. And I think that's where we also made the mistake because we sort of like thought we're dealing with pe people, our own members, who are poor, where are mm -hmm. they going to get the 12 rents um, uh, per year from? And I think had we started that and increased for those who can afford, should we have increased it then, yeah. I'm sure we would have been in a better space. But also we need to invest so that we can have the money. We do get money from Parliament. And remember that we also lost... Um, uh, in terms of uh, the percentage in Parliament, we do get money from pa pa Parliament, but that's not enough. That's not enough for any other political party. It's just not enough. We need to be innovative and creative about where do we make the money to make sure that um, the ANC's uh, staff are properly paid and all other uh, operations that we have are properly uh, paid for. So what do you tell those staff, uh, just before we, I want to move more into the policy conference itself, yeah. the policy side, what do you tell those staff who are now threatening uh, to, to protest at the policy conference this weekend if they don't get paid? What's your assurances? What do you do? Well, we would like to ask uh, that the comrades really appreciate, because they've been with us all day. These are people who've been with us since 1994. Mm. There's few who came in in between. We want our comrades to appreciate, and we are pleading with them to understand that there's nobody who would want not to pay them. It's just a question, as I say, the calculations in the money and where do we get the money to do that. We're doing everything we can to make sure that we get the money, and they will be paid once the money, once we get the money. So so this weekend, ANC policy conference, of course, going to be the story of the weekend uh, for the ruling party. And once you, uh, you mention the word policy, uh, one of the standout ones from the KZN elective conference, which is mm -hmm. going to definitely carry over to mm -hmm. policy conference, uh, and I'm sure you knew I was going to ask this, the step aside policy. It's right there in the name, policy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on this? What's the feeling of the ANC? KZN 
ANC making it very clear what they think of it. Where do you stand on this? There was a reason and purpose for that decision to be taken because the ANC has always been looking for ways and means of ensuring that its own members are also straight. Its own members are straight to the ANC, to the people of South Africa, but also its own members do the right thing in government because we are in government. This, by the way, comes out of us, those of us who've been deployed in government. So there was a good reason for taking that kind of a, a policy decision, but it is in the implementation that then there is a realization that there is a weakness in that decision. And therefore, when KZN uh, uh, pronounces the way it pronounced that it still needs to be discussed, mm. yes, it has to be discussed by the policy conference because policies need to be discussed, agreed upon, and then implemented. You can't just take a policy and not implement it. Uh, just another tweet. I'm trying to get through as many as I can. Thank you, by the way, for everyone who's tweeted us about the minister. Uh, this is actually more of a comment, minister. I'll find a question here as well from... Uh, at Gavin Prince tweeting us, uh, I'm loving how honest and real the minister is answering questions, admitting to their challenges, saying well done. Thank you, Gavin Prince. I'm trying to see if there's a question I can find here somewhere as well. I'm going to come back to the 350 Rand social okay. grant. Someone's asking okay. they haven't been paid for a couple of months, not getting service. Uh, Nomti, uh, I'm going to come back with the minister on that one in a moment. I want to wrap up the ANC side, though. Uh, Nomti, a.k.a. Khalushi. Okay, I'll come back to that tweet. Uh, the minister's also taking notes. Mm -hmm. What did you make of, because you work very closely with the president, uh, obviously, what did you make of the way the ANC uh, comrades handled the president in KZN this, this week? I see you smiling. I was there. You That's there. why I'm smiling. Okay. Yeah. What did you make of I've it? I've been there. Look, the ANC needs stability. And I think the leadership, the new leadership that has come into KZN, and they knew that among the, the, the delegates, there will be those who will be upset because they're still upset with the manner in which the issue of uh, Comrade Jacob Zuma has been handled. But what they did was to agree to the fact that we need the stability and therefore bringing a president to make his comments and close and then causing chaos at a conference is not good for the African National Congress. And they are delegates and they have to have the discipline because once the decision was made that the president has to come and close the conference, the leaders, uh, those that were elected, needed to take responsibility and make sure that the comrades who are at conference mm. understand that it's beyond themselves being in the conference. It is about the image of the African National Congress. It is also about the president himself and his dignity at that moment in time because people are looking at us, not just looking at President Cyril Ramaphosa, they're looking at the entire ANC. Where are you taking us to? So when you have that disorder and that uh, 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 something that really doesn't look very good for the ANC, mm. it's important for us as members to appreciate what we stand for. And it's uh, not just ANC members looking at the ANC, it's the country absolutely. looking at the ANC absolutely. ahead of 2024. Absolutely. And I want to start wrapping up on the ANC conference yeah. in a moment, but I, I have to ask this question. How can we still, how can the ANC still talk about a unified ANC? I'm going to give you two factions which are mm -hmm. well reported on. Mm -hmm. RET faction, mm -hmm. and now this week in the Taliban faction, mm -hmm. as they're called, whatever yeah. that means. How could you be united in this? Surely you just recognize you aren't united and you aim towards the last comments on the, on the policy conference. It takes time to get people who are coming from diverse within the ANC because there's got to be that appreciation of the diversity of the ANC. The ANC is a broad church. It's got everybody in there. Mm. And so to keep everyone in, in, in uniform and to keep everyone appreciating and understanding the role of the ANC. You see, the conference is, was made of branches and branches come from the deepest and furthest areas. And people might be in town where they see the information and they, and they engage with each other much easily. You, you see others who are coming from far-flung areas who have got one thing in mind. Mm. We're going there because we're not happy also with what happened to President uh, uh, Zuma and we want that statement to be made. The responsibility of leadership, and I'm very happy with the, the leadership and the way they managed it, the chairperson, the way they managed the whole thing, but it must be understood that it is challenging even for the leadership of the ANC to keep everybody in one.
Uh, and I'm going to end off away from ANC politics directly, of course, because while it's important you and I talk about ANC ahead of this weekend, most people are asking questions, of course, as you as the Minister of Social Development. So I'll yes. leave one more tweet yeah. for you to answer briefly, Minister, if you can. You know what it's like uh, in live television. Mm -hmm. uh, this one from uh, Nomti, a.k.a. Khalushi, uh, asking, uh, Morning, Gareth. Kindly ask the Minister what will happen to the outstanding 350 rand that was not paid to the people from April to date. Some people haven't received their money there. Obviously, you might not know the exact case, but what happens in a situation like that? Yes, we, we really must apologize <clears throat> for the delays because we needed to make sure that we, 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 we improve on our system, but also we needed to use a different regulation altogether, mm. which therefore then really uh, put us in a bit of a challenge in terms of our systems. They will be backdated. Those who applied and were approved, they will have to be up backdated to the time that they were approved. And I think we, what delayed us also was ensuring that we have negotiations with the banks because it's the banks that have to pay the money and we pay the banks for paying the money. And so we also need to negotiate that because it's quite a sizable amount of money mm. that we need to pay. What I can say to people, those who were approved in April will be backdated from that April to to, 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 the, to current. Well, that's good news, I think, for those yeah. that are needing that money, as we spoke about when we first started our discussion, yeah. Minister, that money desperately needed, so it will be backdated. Lindy Wezulu, thank you so much My for coming in to speak to us. There's a lot to talk about, of course, to uh, the Minister as well, not just from her department, social development, but, of course, from the ANC side as well. So my thanks to uh, Lindy Wezulu. It's going to be a big weekend, ANC policy conference. You can expect us to be there as well to see how this all plays out ahead of the ANC elective conference, the big one, coming up in December.